and welcome to Creative Sweet TV where we really have got a sweet episode for you today. I've just got back from Adobe Live in Sydney where they had a great show up there and I caught up with some old friends, Alan Rosenfeld and Michael Stoddart who we saw last week, uh, Rick Holland and we're going to have some fantastic uh, guest tippers over the next few weeks, the next few months. Uh, so you should really look forward to that. This episode is fantastic. I've got a great tip about snippets, the Adobe Bridge and InDesign CS2. So you look forward to that in a moment. We also have, after the tip, a new section. And I think I'll call it That's Ridiculous or something like that. <laughs> I really have been up to some ridiculous things lately, which I'm sure you'll appreciate when you see it. Hope you enjoy the tip. It's a beauty. See you soon. Fantastic tip here between InDesign and uh, the Adobe Bridge. I've got a new toy. I'm using Mouse Pose uh, to do some highlighting on my screen there. And when I click, a little red dot is going to appear. So again, uh, some new gadgets there. Of course, I'll be doing my uh, usual zooming in and, and zooming out to show you what's going on. We're going to concentrate on snippets and what we can use snippets for. If you've ever used a library in the old days in Quark or even a library in InDesign, I think snippets are even better. We're going to create snippets in conjunction with the Adobe Bridge. So I'm going to switch over to the Adobe Bridge here and you can see I have it pointed at a folder which I've created called Snippets. That is sitting on our desktop. Okay, And there are no items to display in it. No items to display. That means there's nothing in there. So I'm not going to do any trickery there. Let's switch back over to InDesign. And we want to be able to drag and drop some of these graphics to create a snippet out of them. However, we cannot see the Adobe Bridge because our screen is just so small. So here's what we do. We're going to go back to the Adobe Bridge and I'm just going to reduce this window so you can see a little button at the top right here. And we'll zoom in and I'll show you. This is the switch to compact mode button. Now compact mode is just excellent. Let's go ahead and press it right now. And it's just popping off the screen. I'll drag it back in. It makes a really small, neat palette that you can even when you want to press this button to go to that's right ultra compact mode i love ultra compact mode why wouldn't you use ultra compact mode it's so nice and small the beauty of this and i'll just click and drag that over and you can see my red dot i'm so excited when i drag this over and i go back to indesign or any of the cs2 application it stays in front which means I can always access this snippets folder almost like a library palette, except it's better. All we have to do to create a snippet now is select any of these items and click and drag them into this palette. And it's so cool because if you just do them onto the desktop, you don't get a thumbnail and we can increase the size of this. We can give them star ratings like all of the other sort of neat little things that you can do in the Adobe Bridge. There's some star ratings. Of course, we can click on the file name there and rename it. Superpower Mega Sale dot INDS. We'll zoom back out there. We can make this a bit smaller again. We can grab another file here and drag it in. And we can keep making snippets like that because the Adobe Bridge in ultra compact mode has a setting under this pop-out menu here and it says compact window is always on top. 
compact window always on top. This is a great way to create a folder of stuff that you love to use all the time. And there's my logo. I'm just going to go and drag and drop that in there. And that has been converted from Adobe Illustrator via copy and paste into InDesign. And now it's a snippet that I can use whenever I like. So if there's graphics, any sorts of graphics that you may like to reuse, create a folder of snippets, share them with your friends. They're tiny little files. They can go on a common drive in your studio and you will never regret the day that you started using snippets. So that's my tip for this week. I really hope you enjoyed that one because I think it's <laughs> Welcome to our new section called That's Ridiculous. And boy, have I been ridiculous this week to get the ball rolling. I've been on a terrific resource on the Adobe website, the adobeforums.com. I'll put the web address down here in a, man, in a minute. It's a great place to go if you've got questions about your Adobe software and you're not really sure that you're going to get the answer out of the menu or it's a specific problem or there seems to be a bug or something you can post a question on the Adobe forums and I'll show you where the address is uh, at the bottom of the screen there. I love the Adobe forums uh, and the questions are usually quite technical so I decided I'd post my own question on there and see what sort of a response I got from this question. I'm new to InDesign and I can't understand why we don't have enough image options. It's just so happens that I'm working on a brochure for a chicken farm and I could really use a feather. But every time I go to object feather, I get some really strange message about width and noise. Does InDesign do sounds as well? But even when I click it, no feather. Please help. <laughs> <laughs> well, boy, did that set the cat amongst the pigeons. What a ridiculous question. So I waited and I waited and I got a response. Uh, eventually, I got a response from, I think it was Taz, mm, Taz or Phil or something. He responded, maybe you are overprinting a white feather on a white background. And did you want the buck buck ah! or not? <laughs> mm, what an excellent <laughs> conversation. <laughs> I suggest if you'd like to keep up with what's going on there, then definitely log on to the Adobe forums. Post a sensible question and perhaps you might be able to see my ridiculous one at the same time. Maybe we'll get some more responses from other people. I'll let you know about that next week. But we've got plenty of ridiculous things coming up on this show over the next few weeks. If you have something ridiculous you'd like to share with the Creative Suite audience, please email it in to me or send it to me on my email address, which is just right down there. And that would be really great. Before we go, we've got some new DVDs out on the market from the How To Wow team. This is How To Wow with Photoshop Elements. So we've got the fundamentals over here, Photoshop Elements Fundamentals, and we've got the creations there. So if you know anyone that is a Photoshop Elements freak, then get them onto those. They're cheap as you can find them at ultratraining.com. Dot AU. If you dress there, we'll see you guys next week.